This week on Premier Preps, Rockland and Whitney clash in the Quarry Bowl, an instant classic between Wood Creek and Ponderosa flag football, and Folsom and Oak Ridge throw down in SFL volleyball. Plus, the story of Jesuits Tristan McLaughlin, whose inspiration comes from his little sister's battle with cancer. Don't miss this week's Premier Preps. Episode 7 of Premier Preps. I'm your host, Nick Pecorero. Thank you, as always, for spending some time with us on your Sunday. We've got a great show lined up this week, and we are kicking things off in the city of Rockland. You know, no matter the season, no matter the records, you can throw everything out the window when Rockland Thunder and the Whitney Wildcats get together on the football field, and you can bet that the stadium is going to be packed to the brim in what's known as the annual Quarry Bowl, Rockland and Whitney locking up on Friday night. The town of Rockland knows how to do it right. The Quarry Bowl always starts with not just the captains, but the entire teams coming out to midfield for a pregame handshake. Rockland and Whitney, Quarry Bowl Friday, here we go. First quarter, Rockland with the ball, and a good way to start is by getting the ball into Derek Keeley's hands. Carson Floyd with the shoestring tackle to save a touchdown. On the same drive, Reeves Sloan looking for the end zone on fourth down, but Jason Tearmino shutting it down with some beautiful coverage, and it's a turnover on downs. Rockland gets the ball back, though, and this time Sloan finds Keen Frank, the former Whitney Wildcat, getting Rockland out in front with a 19-yard score, 7-0 Thunder. Second quarter now, I told you good things happen when you get the ball into Derek Keeley's hands. He rumbles in from four yards out, and the Thunder lead 14-0. And even when Rockland's on defense, Keeley finds a way to get the ball into his hands. Malachi Kendall pops the ball loose, and Keeley picks it up for the Thunder. Rockland takes over, and you know where this ball's going. Keeley with an unbelievable run, just refusing to go down. That set up a short score from Rafi Marino to make it 21-0 Rockland. Speaking of Rafi Marino, if Derek Keeley is the Thunder, then Rafi Marino is the Lightning. That's quite the one-two punch out of that Rockland backfield. This run gets Rockland inside the 10, and then Marino goes to finish off what he started, his second touchdown of the game, and the Thunder is rolling, 28 to nothing. Now right before halftime, we had to put this play in there, Mikey Cunningham, numero UNO with the incredible concentration off of the tip pass. We might see that later in our plays of the week. Whitney trying to get something going in the third. Cameron Taylor with a big run to get the Wildcats inside the five. And they have a first and goal opportunity from the one. Quarterback Carson Floyd trying to sneak it in, but Rockland says, <clears throat> the Thunder pushing Whitney backwards on third down. And then on fourth down, Floyd gets it to Geddes Rose. Fighting for a score, but Dominic Coelho pushes him out of bounds just shy of the end zone. Rockland with the goal line stand. On the ensuing drive, Rockland goes 99 yards, punctuated by an Alex Durham touchdown. The Thunder move to 13-3 overall against Whitney and 5-1 and overall on the season. The way we practice, we practice with the most intensity in the SFL, I believe. Every day it's just, and it's just great. We're like a brotherhood. We're all in sync and we all have chemistry. Time now to take a look at our Premier Preps football top 10 rankings as we wrap up the first week of October. The 
Ponderosa Bruins have had one of the hottest starts to the flag football season going 14-0 entering Wednesday night. But if anyone knows about hot starts, it's the Wood Creek Timberwolves, who last year rode a 23-0 streak all the way to the section finals and have been on an absolute tear since losing to Pondo on September 9th. The Timberwolves looking to hand the Bruins their first loss with the top spot in the Capital Valley Conference on the line on Wednesday. They were calling this game the CVC Super Bowl. Wood Creek and Ponderosa vying for league supremacy Wednesday. Pondo's undefeated, but the Creek has been on a tear. Here we go. Brooklyn Nordquist scrambling on Pondo's first possession, but she finds her way to the end zone for a seven yard score and it's seven nothing Bruins early on. But Wood Creek matching that energy, Izzy Devereaux on the run. She finds Amaya Grant from five yards out to knot the score up at seven apiece. On Pondo's next drive, we've seen this connection a lot this year. Nordquist to Rowan Thomas, shaking and baking all the way to the end zone. Bruins lead 14-7 with five and a half left in the first half. Timberwolves respond big time, though, as Devereaux hits Amaya Grant once again, and she is the fastest kid on earth. She didn't play the last time these teams met, and she's making her presence felt this time. A 55-yard score, and we're locked up at 14 at the break. Second half, Pondo marches down to the doorstep. Ellie Escobar with a little shovel pass to Molly McFarland. Pondo retakes the lead 21-14, but on the next Wood Creek drive, Devereaux, who happens to be completely blind in her left eye, by the way, able to locate Ryan Nyer in the end zone, a 26-yard score, and Wood Creek's going to go for two in the lead. Amaya Grant hauls it in, and it's 22-21 Creek. We've got a ball game, folks. Pondo trying to answer, but Brooklyn Nordquist is picked off by Natasha Jensen, the freshman, coming down with a big takeaway, and that gives Wood Creek a chance to ice this thing. The ensuing drive, it's officially fall right now, but it's always summer for Wood Creek. Summer Hennessy with the touchdown. That extends Wood Creek's lead to eight with a buck 40 to play. Nordquist can't find anyone. She tries to punch it in herself, but she stopped just shy of the goal line. And then on fourth down with 24 seconds left, she finds Isabella Hampton Tiber for the score. But the Bruins need two for the tie. And just like Limp Biscuit once said, Tell me what you're going to do now. Keep rowing, 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 rowing. Rowan Thomas with the two-point try, and we're headed to OT. That is how the song goes, right? Anyway, Pondo with the ball first in OT, and guess who? Rowan Thomas just balling on Wednesday. It's 36-29 Pondo, and Wood Creek has a chance to respond. Devereaux, she's rolling, rolling to her right. Amaya Grant with her third touchdown of the game, and the Timberwolves are going to go for two and the win. Devereaux, under pressure, fires, incomplete. Ponderosa survives one of the games of the year thus far and stays unbeaten at 15-0. A lot of people thought we were going to lose, but we knew that we could do it. We just had to believe in each other. We have great coaches. Our program is amazing, especially for first year. I just think we wanted it really, really badly. We want to prove everybody wrong. Can't get enough high school sports in Sacramento? Well, Premier Preps has got you covered like no one else. You want game highlights? We got you. You want local insight? We got you. You want inspirational feature stories? We've got you. How about exclusive interviews with prominent players and coaches in the area? We got you. Scores, updates, top plays, and much, much more every Sunday at 5 o'clock during the high school season on YouTube. We look back at the week that was and keep you updated on who's got next. So follow along on social media and subscribe on YouTube to Premier Preps with me, Nick Pecorero, because it's giving Sacramento high school sports the coverage it deserves. Jesuit offensive lineman Tristan McLaughlin is often tasked to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with some behemoths in the trenches. 
And while going head-to-head -head with monstrous defensive tackles might be a scary thought to most people, Tristan draws his inspiration from the bravery of his little sister, who has had to fight some pretty monstrous battles of her own. Playing in the Sierra Foothill League, Jesuit offensive lineman Tristan McLaughlin has seen his share of heavyweight battles. Uh, he's been tough, he's been physical. I think of Tristan, I've been using the word for him since last year. He's very ornery when it comes to his job. Uh, he likes to hit people. Uh, he's a team captain. He works very hard at his craft. He works very hard in the classroom. Um, I have a lot of respect for Tristan and what Trist Tristan is trying to accomplish on the football field. Uh, my role is to like kind of be a leader right now. So I've been trying to uh, lead the linemen uh, specifically. Be that like senior presence that uh, I can really bring everybody together and uh, show up at game days. But there's no battle that McLaughlin can face in the trenches that can compare to what his family has endured. In particular, his little sister Julia, who was diagnosed with acute lymphocytic leukemia at just five years old. She had just started kindergarten and she was five. And so around November, she kept saying that her legs and her back were hurting a ton. She couldn't like, get up from her bed and uh, you know she was having like leg pains and like bone pains and there were times where she couldn't walk and she would be up in the middle of the night crying because she was in a lot of pain. A few days later it was, got too bad so we finally went to the doctors. We didn't know it but they had actually sent her blood work for um, a, a, a specialized blood work that they only do like up in Seattle. We just got a phone call from an oncologist on a January 25th of 2017 who said your daughter has cancer we, and you need to come in tonight. My brother and I stayed up late. We didn't know they come back. We finally got the news and you know that was like devastating for a young kid like me because I didn't really understand the, what was happening. I, you know, I thought she'd passed away. That night we drove up to Kaiser up in Roseville and the next morning they got her, they started her right away on treatment. At the time, the McLaughlins lived in Lodi, and Julia's treatment took place in Roseville. While mom tended to Julia in the hospital, Tristan was in middle school, and the McLaughlins leaned on friends and family to take Tristan in. It was hard. He was shuffled from house to house, especially when I was in the hospital. Um, we were so grateful for the friends that stepped up. They took him to the games for me, I mean, and they would take him sometimes on weekends for outings. They, they bring food, like they'd bring dinner for me all the time. I got to sleep over at their house. But now that I'm older, I got to reflect and think how grateful I am for them to actually do that for me. Any child that gets diagnosed with cancer, it, it doesn't just affect that child, it affects the whole family. It changes the family and it's always how things were before the diagnosis and how things were after the diagnosis. And I think people need to remember that it's just not about the cancer kid, it's about the siblings too, and they often get lost in the shuffle. Luckily for Tristan, he's had the game of football to help him channel his emotions in a positive way. Sometimes, you know, I get angry that, you know, this happened to her. Like, you know, why does this happen to my sister? You know, why, why even have the risk of her passing away? So I like, I think football is a good thing to get my anger out. And then also, I think just also the team, and it's like another, another family from them. It, it seems like and feels like he uses, you know, that part of his life as motivation to play uh, every day in practice and uh, game day. And off the field, Tristan makes sure to take time to help Julia, his biggest inspiration. She had a ton of spinal taps, so much chemo that went through her, her spine and up into her uh, brain. Since, like, I had a lot of chemo, it affected my brain a lot, so I was held back a lot, and that made me, made me feel sad because I'm actually supposed to be in seventh, but I got held back two years, so I'm in fifth grade. Over the summer, I would spend time reading with her and uh, reading her, like, books, and uh, it was just... I loved like helping her because it made me feel like I was doing my part to actually uh, help in her life. I am understanding concepts of like, so I'm getting a lot of 100%, so that makes me feel happy. Awesome, good for you. The whole family had reason to be happy in June as the McLaughlins received news that Julia had been deemed cancer free. She'll still be checked every year for the rest of her life basically. and. Um, kids that have had cancer in their childhood have higher rates of other cancers. There's always that chance 
but at least we're, we're good for now. <laughs> I was happy that I don't, like, didn't have to go through that again. Well, I think at first she was a little tough because, you know, she's obviously a kid. She's still growing into what she bees, but, I um, mean, she's like a, a rambunctious, you know, a little sassy too, but, you know, joyful little girl, and I love, I'm so glad she's my sister, and I love being with her. What do you think that you learned about yourself throughout this whole experience? That I can do anything. Seeing her be so brave through the, the tough times, it was, it was super inspiring. I carry it with me throughout football, is because... It just seeing her push through all of that at such a young age is just, it's just what inspires me. From Jesuit High School, I'm Nick Pecorero, and this is Premier Preps. Premier Preps wants to know who has the best student section in the area, and this is your chance to prove it with our Premier Student Section of the Week. This week, we go to a small but rowdy bunch at a recent volleyball game at Christian Brothers High School. Remember, even if I'm not at your game, tag me in a short clip on social media of your student section going crazy, and we'll see if we can get you a spot on the show. This week started off with a banger of a matchup in the Sierra Foothill League volleyball landscape. Two of our Premier Preps top four teams entering the week trying to make their push for the postseason. Number four, Oak Ridge hosting number two, Folsom, in what is always an entertaining rivalry, that game happening on Monday night. Coming into this week, Folsom was our number two team and Oak Ridge our number four team doing battle in the SFL on Monday in El Dorado Hills. Here we go, first set, Folsom comes out swinging with sophomore Avery Masters just making it rain early on for the Bulldogs. Oak Ridge trying to answer back as Avery Town puts it down, but Folsom was in command in the first. Maddie Seabury with the rejection to end the first set, 25-13. Bulldogs lead one game to none. Switching sides for set two, Seabury showing she could swing it too off the feed from Grace Port and they would keep pouring it on like ranch on my daughter's chicken tenders. Hadassah Makama throwing down, a testament to the depth of this Folsom team. And Oak Ridge trying to stay within striking distance, though, as Kaya Charles finds some hardwood. And then London Welcher with the diving dig. Avery Town finishes off the point, and we're going to extra points. But that is when Avery Masters was the most masterful Folsom takes set two, 28-26, and is one win away. In the third, here come the Trojans, though. Town feeds Riley Elliott, and then Town is on the receiving end of this feed from Ella Hybe, and the Trojans are cooking in the third. Kaya Charles gets up to throw down a solid night for the junior middle, and then Ella Hybe finishes off set three with an ace. Oak Ridge takes the third set, 25-22. To the fourth we go, and this one, folks, was all Folsom. Avery Masters with another big smash, and in the honor of the late great Dikembe Mutombo, here she is saying, no, 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 not today. <laughs> and then something just possessed senior captain Lindsey Olsen in the fourth. The San Francisco State commit just took over the final set, 11 kills in total on Monday. She and her sophomore pal Avery Masters led the Bulldogs. Masters led everyone with 12 kills. And then on match point, Brooklyn Graham does the honors. Folsom gets the 3-1 win, and the Bulldogs are rolling deep these days. I think we all truly played for each other. There was no like separation on the court. Whenever we made a mistake, we just moved on, and we just all like truly cared for each other on the court, cheered each other on. And the energy was just amazing, and I think it pushed us through. It's such an amazing win. Hey, new sponsor alert for the rest of the fall season. The girls' flag football and girls' volleyball rankings are made possible thanks to Lini's Pictures, the new official photography sponsor for Premier Preps. I am super excited and grateful for my friend Aline Salerno for supporting Premier Preps. And hey, we should all help support her as well. 
Visit leaniespictures.com or scan the QR code right here and see all the amazing products that they have to offer. And with that said, here is the latest girls volleyball top 10 presented by Leanies Pictures. Leanies Pictures is your go-to site for priceless photos and memorabilia. This local family business has captured great action shots for a decade, but there's so much more to offer with a personalized touch for team and individual photos, game day galleries, banners, yard signs, festive mementos for senior nights, team banquets, or even just to cheer your kid on at their games, all 100% custom made by Leanies Pictures, any student, any season, any occasion. So make those memories last forever and visit leanyspictures.com and use the promo code and the P7 for $7 photo downloads exclusively through Premier Preps. That's leanyspictures.com, your official photography sponsor for Premier Preps. Well, as we learned earlier in the show, the city of Rockland really shows up and shows out when it's Thunder and Wildcats get together under the Friday night lights. So why not let the girls play too? Rockland flag football, which upset our top-ranked team Del Oro earlier this week, looking to stay hot against Whitney, a team that has a chance to make some noise come playoff time. It's the Quarry Bowl flag football style, cause girls is players too. This is what it's all about right here. The battle for the belt between Rockland and Whitney. Flag football under the Friday night lights, let's go. It was a defensive battle for much of the first half. Rockland squashes Whitney's first drive as Caroline Wolfing gets the fourth down flagpole. But Whitney would answer with some D of its own. Check out freshman Gianna DeSantis breaking up this pass play and forcing a turnover on downs. Robin Nguyen shovels it to Skyler Linehan, a near house call before Natalia Takeuchi gets the tackle. But Linehan would not be denied. A short touchdown makes it 7-0 Thunder. Same score to start the second half. Whitney with some pressure. Elise Sutton gets in there for a sack, and that opens the door for a big Whitney drive. Freshman QB Lulu M finds Hannah LaRoche across the middle for a nice gain. And then M again with Mackenzie Murray in hot pursuit. Launches one downfield for Emma Rabe for a 25-yard pickup. The Wildcats are in business. Now check out M on this next play. Lulu was going cuckoo, snatching some ankles along the way, picking up a few more yards, and that sets up this play. Lulu M to Julia Rawls for a six-yard touchdown toss. Whitney's on the board, but a failed one-point try keeps Rockland in front 7-6. On Rockland's next drive, Nguyen with a short pass to Skylar Linehan who says, I'll take it from here. She hits the afterburners for a 60-yard score. Rockland leads 13-6, but Linehan was not done. After a Whitney punt, Nguyen goes back to her favorite target on Friday, and Linehan gets the hat trick with an 8-yard score. Thunder goes up 19-6 with two minutes to play. Whitney's not going away quietly though. They come up with a big defensive stop as Julia Rawls gets the pick and she's got her eyes on the end zone. She makes three defenders miss, but Alyssa Patel comes up with a touchdown saving tackle. Wildcats are still alive, but Rockland seals it with a pick of its own. Maddie Kirby with the good hands and that championship belt is in good hands with the Thunder who earns a 19 to six victory. Yeah, it was really tough. We prepared well, but we overall we, we came out and we did what we've been preparing to do. So it's it's crazy. You can tell like both sides are cheering. It's it's great. It's um it's it's a good atmosphere. Big shout out once again to Leany's Pictures for sponsoring our Girls Flag Football Top 10. Not only does Leany's Pictures take amazing action photos, but there's so much more to offer. Banners, lawn signs, and much more for all kinds of occasions. Visit leanyspictures.com, the official photography sponsor of Premier Preps. Let's get right into our Premier Preps Flag Football Top 10. 
presented by Leany's Pictures. All right, time now for our Infinite Performance Plays of the Week. Dr. Janae Young over at Infinite Performance Physical Therapy is doing some great work for anyone in need of rehab, injury prevention, and peak athletic performance. So make sure to give them a follow, and if you're in need of some great programs to build yourself back up, then Infinite Performance Physical Therapy has got you covered. Don't forget, you can send me top play nominations even if I'm not at your game. Tag me in a short clip on social media by Friday night with a brief description of the play, and we will see if we can get you into the countdown. Without further ado, here are this week's Infinite Performance Plays of the Week. We go to Rowan Thomas of Ponderosa, who seems to make at least one or two of these plays every game. Eight catches, a buck 22, and two tutties in a huge win over Wood Creek. We've seen Avery Masters quite a bit in these top play segments. That's because she can do stuff like this. Excuse me while I kiss the sky. We go to Wood Creek's Amaya Grant, who's got a fever, and the only prescription is another touchdown. Grant had three scores on Wednesday against Pondo, including this 55-yarder for the T-Wolves. From the flag football quarry bowl, Whitney's freshman QB, Lulu M, in for an injured starter, putting on her dancing shoes and taking Rockland for a little tango. Rockland wins, but Whitney gets into the countdown. And at number one, we shared the amazing story of Mikey Cunningham and his dad a few weeks back. Shout out to Big Mike and Mikey Jr. with the incredible catch for the Rockland Thunder. Big winners in the Quarry Bowl this week, and that is your Infinite Performance Play of the Week. Well, that's it for Episode 7 of Premier Preps. I want to send another big shout out to my sponsors, Infinite Performance Physical Therapy and Leany's Pictures for helping support the show and these great student athletes in our community. If you would like to step up and support the show as well, please send me a message. There are still plenty of great opportunities for Premier Preps to help you support your business while we deliver top-notch high school sports coverage that you will find only right here on Premier Preps. I'm Nick Pecorero. Thank you, as always, for hanging out every Sunday. We'll see you next week. Night-night.